as we think about this rather remarkable character by the name of Thomas, I not only think about the incident that was read today in the Gospel reading, the famous, unless I see, I won't believe, but the outcome of what happened to him in his life. It's recorded really quite early that he, according to tradition, brought the Gospel to in Syria, as well as in India, and even a part of Iran, among what were then known as the Parthenians, northeastern Iran. And of course, there's this whole tradition of the Indian church of Toma, uh, Mar Toma, that still exists. And I have a friend of mine by the name of Mark Samuel, who is from India, his family is from India, that traces his roots back to that group of people who, who became Christians. His dad now runs the Oxford Center for Mission Studies at Oxford University. Um, so we're not just merely talking about a man who was turned in the midst of his doubt. We're also talking about a man whose life in that turning bore extraordinary fruit, <laughs> literally all over the world. And so, especially even today, I, I'm praying for the Christians in Syria, mm -hmm. and Iran, and in India, many of whom are under severe persecution, and who trace the gospel bringings, the gospel brought to them through this man, Thomas. But the message of Thomas for me is more than just you know, the missionary fruit of faith. It has everything to do with what Jesus gave him. Because the whole thrust of actually all three lessons is the call to endurance in the face of what God has provided. Now, the miracle, it is a kind of miracle story that you'd have Thomas sort of meeting privately with those who said they seen Jesus and nobody else is around. And he makes this very specific, unless I see the marks in his hands, in his side, I will not believe. And you know, it's almost like as an apparition, Jesus appears among them later and goes straight to Thomas and says, put your hand here, put your hand here. You know, verbatim responding to the request of, that, that he made of Jesus when he wasn't there. And I, that says something very important to me about how Jesus really wants us not to have faith as something that we acquire as much as it is faith receiving that which he gives. Because faith is characterized in the New Testament as a gift. It's actually not the fruit of our effort. We can deepen and sharpen that which we have received, which we are in fact called to do. But in the end, faith actually is something that we receive. And the whole story of Thomas is the testimony of that truth, that Thomas didn't have it, he needed it, and Jesus gave it to him. And Jesus gave him precisely what he needed to, to believe. It, it wasn't an issue of, Thomas, come on, just believe anyway. He, actually, he was very specific in his reply to Thomas's request to his disciples. This is what I need to believe. And that's exactly what Jesus gave him. So that in the Hebrews lesson, where you have people who are also under severe persecution, not dissimilar to some of those who are now the fruit of Thomas's work, is the call to endure. And the writer says with some real passion, we are not those who draw back. We're those who have faith and belief. In other words, we're moving forward. We're not going to be those. It's this acknowledgement of what it is that God has given us. And out of that, I'm choosing to step out on that. I'm going to act on that. I'm going to be who God has called me to be. I'm going to be what, I'm going to act out what God has gifted me in that act of faith. And it seems to me that really is our part. There is a God part, which is he gives us the faith. But then there is the our part to act on what it is that we received. So that we can say with the writer of Hebrews, we are not those who draw back. We are those who move forward, who believe. In other words, who act out the very gospel that God has given us. To act knowing that we are one of God's chosen sons or daughters. Uh, in some ways, the commitments that we make in baptism and in the... John will now make soon as regards to being received, is in essence, in classical church language, 
that, that decision to do just that. To say, yes, I am one of those who, if we want to use our language, who is committed to living out his or her baptismal vows. To use the Hebrew language, that we're saying, I am one of those who is willing not to grow back, but to move forward in faith. They literally say the same thing in that regard. And so, not only are we giving thanks today for Thomas, we're also giving thanks for John's decision, and we are also in our own we wills and our own commitments, affirming what God has done in us, in giving us faith, and also choosing, as by such, to act upon it in the we wills. And so, in some ways, thank God for Thomas. Thank God for the faith that he that God gave him, and the tremendous fruit, Syria, India, Iran, but also thank God for the faith that God has given us, and us choosing to respond with the writer of Hebrews, the we wills, and also thank God for John, who is making that decision to stand with us, and with the rest in Anglicanism, to say, we will, we will, we will. Amen. Amen.